So what we can't do is combine real and imaginary components. We have to keep real and imaginary components separate at all times. So if a complex number has real components and it has imaginary components, we have to handle each of those separately. When working with complex numbers, we need to be able to do the four main operations. We need to be able to add them, subtract them, multiply them and divide them. So let's look at a few examples of each of these. If we start with addition, if we were to have 4 plus 3j and we wanted to add 2 plus 2j. Now we know that we can't mix real and imaginary together. So all we can do is we can add the two real parts. 4 plus 2 is 6 and we can add the two imaginary parts. 3j plus 2j is 5j. It's a little bit like collecting like terms. We can collect all of the real parts together and we can collect all of the imaginary parts together. Let's look at one more of these. If we had 4 minus 2j plus minus 6 minus 2j. Exactly the same as before, we're going to take the real parts. We've got 4 plus minus 6. Well, 4 plus minus 6 is the same as 4 minus 6 which is minus 2, and then we've got minus 2j plus minus 2j, which is the same as minus 2j minus 2j, or minus 4j. So what we're doing here is relatively straightforward. Let's look at a couple of subtractions. If we had 7 plus 6j minus 3 plus 4j, We've got 7 minus 3 is 4. 6j minus 4j is plus 2j. And if we had minus 3 minus 4j minus 2 minus 6j, then we've got minus 3 minus 2, which is minus 5. And we've got minus 4j minus minus 6j, which is the same as plus 6j. So minus 4j plus 6j is going to leave us 2j. Next, we'll look at multiplication. Now, for multiplication, we're going to use the methods that we used when we multiplied out quadratics. So hopefully you recall, when we multiply these, every term in the left-hand bracket has to be multiplied by every term in the right hand bracket. So if we begin with the 2, we need to do 2 times 3, and then we need to do 2 times 3j. So we're multiplying both terms in the right hand bracket by the first term in the left hand bracket. Well, 2 times 3 is 6, and 2 times 3j is 6j. Then we move on to the second term in the first bracket, and we need to multiply that by everything in the second bracket. So 2j times 3, again, is plus 6j. Now 2j times 3j is 6j squared. But if you remember, what we said was j squared is just minus 1. So what we've got is we've got 6 plus 6j, plus 6j, plus 6 times minus 1. Well, 6 times minus 1 is just minus 6. So we've got 6 plus 6j, plus 6j, minus 6. 6 minus 6 is 0. So in this case, our real components are disappearing. 6j plus 6j is just 12j. So all we're left with is an imaginary number rather than a complex number. We'll do one more multiplication. This time we'll do minus 3 plus 4j 6 minus 3j. Exactly the same process. Minus 3 times both terms in the right hand brackets. Well minus 3 times 6 is minus 18. And minus 3 times minus 3j is the same as 3 times 3j, which is just plus 
negative 9j. A minus times a minus is a plus. Next, we're going to move on to our second term in the, in the left-hand bracket and multiply it by the two terms in the right-hand bracket. 4j times 6, or 6 times 4, is 24. So we're going to get plus 24j. 4j times minus 3j is minus 12j squared. Recall that j squared is minus 1, and we'll be left with minus 18 plus 9j plus 24j minus 12 times minus 1. Next line, we've got minus 18 plus 9j plus 24j. Well, minus 12 times minus 1 is just plus 12. Now we can collect like terms. Minus 18 plus 12 is just minus 6. 9j plus 24j is just 33j. And there we have our complex number once we've multiplied those two complex numbers together. Now the final operation that we need to do is division. And there's a slight trick to solving these. So if we set up a division, 2 plus 2j divided by 1 plus 3j. Before we can resolve this, we need to multiply the top and bottom of this fraction by the conjugate of the denominator. Now that sounds really complex, but the conjugate of the denominator, well first of all the denominator is the number on the bottom. And the conjugate of the denominator is just 1 minus 3j. It's the same as the complex number except the sign before the imaginary component needs to change. So if the denominator had read 1 minus 3j, then the conjugate would be 1 plus 3j. And we'll do an example of that sort next. Now the reason we need to do that is so that we end up with a fraction where the denominator, the number on the bottom, is a real number. At the moment it's a complex number. It's got an imaginary component. So let's do that now. We'll work through the process. We're going to multiply the top by 1 minus 3j. And we're also going to multiply the bottom by 1 minus 3j. Here essentially what we have is we have two multiplications to do. We have to do 2 plus 2j multiplied by 1 minus 3j. And we also need to do 1 plus 3j times 1 minus 3j. So we've just been through the process of multiplication. We know to resolve the top of this fraction, we need to times the first term in the left-hand bracket by both terms in the right-hand bracket. 2 times 1 is 2. 2 times minus 3j is minus 6j. Now we're going to move to the second term in the left-hand bracket. 2 times 1 is 2, so we're going to have plus 2j. And 2j times minus 3j is minus 6j squared. Well, minus 6j squared is the same as minus 6 times minus 1, which is plus 6. Remember, j squared is just minus 1. Let's move to our denominator. We're going to take the first term in the left-hand bracket. 1 times 1 is 1. 1 times minus 3j is minus 3j. We're going to move to the second term. 3j times 1 is plus 3j. And 3j times minus 3j is going to be minus 9j squared, or minus 9 times minus 1 is just plus 9. OK, now we can simplify. We've got on the top, we've got 2 plus 6 is 8. We've got minus 6j plus 2j, which is minus 4j. On the bottom, our real components, we've got 1 plus 9, which is 10. And here's the reason why we multiply through by the conjugate. Minus 3j plus 3j is just 0. We've now got a real denominator to our equation. We can separate this back out, so our solution is 8 over 10 minus 4 over 10j.
all we've done is we've separated that back into two fractions. Okay, we're going to do one more example of these. This time we're going to do minus 2 plus 3j, all divided by 4 minus 2j. The conjugate of the denominator this time is 4 plus 2j. Remember, all we're doing is we're changing the sign before the imaginary component. So, we've got multiplied by 4 plus 2j for our numerator and multiplied by 4 plus 2j for our denominator. Just going to rewrite this. So, we've got minus 2 plus 3j times 4 plus 2j all divided by 4 minus 2j 4 plus 2j. Next, we're going to start multiplying out. So the first term is going to be multiplied by both the terms in the right-hand bracket. Minus 2 times 4 is minus 8. Minus 2 times 2j is minus 4j. I'm going to move on to the second term, the 3j. 3j times 4 is plus 12j. 3j times 2j is 6j squared. j squared is minus 1. 6 times minus 1 is minus 6. On to the bottom. 4 times 4 is 16. 4 times 2j is 8j. On to the second term in the left-hand bracket. Minus 2j times 4 is minus 8j. And minus 2j times 2j is minus 4j squared, which is the same as plus 4. Next we can simplify. Well, minus 8 minus 6 is minus 14 for our real components. Minus 4j plus 12j is plus 8j for our imaginary on the top. On the bottom, we've got 16 plus 4, which is 20. Well, 8j minus 8j just cancels out. So we're left with minus 14 over 20 plus 8j over 20. Now, if you wanted, you could reduce those fractions to their lowest form. So you'd have minus 7 over 10. It's just an equivalent fraction. And 8 over 20 is the same as 4 over 10, which is the same as 2 over 5. All I've done is divide the top and bottom of that fraction by 4.